equilateral and equiangular corollaries. This is 4.9b. We've got 16 previous videos that are in Chapter 4 that if you go to the description, there's the geometry playlist. An equilateral triangle has three congruent side lengths. An equiangular triangle has three congruent angle measures. If a triangle is equilateral, it's also equiangular. And the triangle sum theorem states the sum of the interior angles of a triangle equal 180 degrees. Well, if it's equiangular, we could take that 180 degrees and divide it by the three angles and know that it's 60 degrees per angle. Here's the equilateral triangle corollary. The corollary says if a triangle is equilateral, then it's equiangular. We have a triangle here that's equilateral. All the sides are congruent. That means the angles are all congruent. Angle A is congruent to angle B, and that's congruent to angle C. And you can write this in a proof as equilateral, the triangle symbol, the arrow for therefore, equiangular, and then a triangle. Using properties of equilateral triangles, we can find the value of x. We see this triangle here with three congruent sides, and it's saying that this angle C is 3x plus 15. Well, triangle ABC is equiangular because equilateral triangles, therefore, equiangular triangles. We have 3x plus 15 degrees equals 60 degrees because the measure of each angle of an equiangular triangle is 60 degrees. We can solve for x. We subtract 15 from both sides. We get 3x equals 45. We divide both sides by 3 coefficient, and we get x is equal to 15. Here's the equiangular triangle corollary. It says if a triangle is equiangular, then it's equilateral. So it's just like this one, except now if it's equiangular, it's equilateral. So we have a triangle with three equal sides, three congruent sides. That means the sides are congruent. DE is congruent to DF, which is congruent to EF. And you can write in a proof equiangular triangle, therefore equilateral triangle. We can find the value of t in this triangle. We can see it's equiangular and it is equilateral because it's equiangular. This side, JL, is 2t plus 1. This side, KL, is 4t minus 8. Well, if it's equilateral, then that means all the sides are equal. That means 2t plus 1 is equal to 4t minus 8, and that's our equation. We can say 4t minus 8 equals 2t plus 1. It's the definition of an equilateral triangle. We can either start by moving one of the numbers, or we can move the variable. So starting with the variable, we can get rid of the 2t from this side by subtracting 2t from both sides. That's going to leave us with 2t minus 8 is equal to 1. Now we can get rid of this negative 8 by adding 8, and we get 2t equals 9. Divide both sides by this coefficient 2, and we get that t is equal to 4.5. Using a coordinate proof, we can prove that the triangles whose vertices are the midpoints of the sides of an isosceles triangle are also isosceles. So taking a look at this, we've got a big purple isosceles triangle, ABC, and inside of it is a little triangle, XYZ. We can see that B is at the origin 0, 0, A is at 2A, 2B, and C is at 4A, 0. And a coordinate proof can be easier if we place one of the sides of the triangle along the x-axis and locate the vertex at the origin or on the y-axis. So it's given that triangle ABC is isosceles, x is the midpoint of AB, y is the midpoint of AC, and z is the midpoint of BC. We need to prove that triangle XYZ is isosceles. We draw a diagram and place the coordinates of triangle ABC and triangle XYZ as shown. And by the midpoint formula, so remember, we're going to put in the X1, X2 values and the Y1, Y2 values. They're divided by 2. That's the midpoint formula. We put in our X and Y values, and the coordinates of X are the quotient of 2A plus 0 and 2 and 2B plus 0 and 2. That's going to give us an AB. See? The 2 over 2 becomes a 1, so we have 1a plus 0, so it's an a. And this is 1b plus 0, so it's a b. And the coordinates of y are 2a plus 4a over 2 and 2b plus 0 over 2. That's going to simplify to a plus 2a. We're going to have 1a plus 2a, which is going to be a 3a. And we've got 1b plus 0, which is a b.
And the coordinates for z are the quotient of 4a and 0 and over 2, and 0 plus 0 and 2. That's going to give us a 2a plus 0, which is just a 2a, and this one is going to be a 0. Then we're going to use the distance formula. That's this one here. We did that in a previous video with the x and y values, okay? The distance between two points. So by the distance formula, xz is equal to the square of 2a minus a squared plus 0 minus b squared. And that's going to simplify to a, the square of a squared plus b squared. And yz is the square of 2a minus 3a squared plus 0 minus b squared. And that's going to simplify to the square of a squared plus b squared. So these are the same. And since xz is equal to yz, xz is congruent to yz. Well, that's by definition if they're equal, they're congruent, right? So triangle xyz is isosceles. So remember, an isosceles triangle has at least two congruent sides and its properties can be used to prove that it also has at least two congruent angles. An equilateral triangle has three congruent sides and angles. Our next lesson is congruent triangles to prove constructions valid. That's 4.9c. It's going to be our last video before we start chapter 5. So I hope you were able to write down these corollaries. They're going to be useful for proofs, and I hope you're doing well. I hope you have a great day. Hit that like button for me, and I'll see you next time. Bye.